I can't believe I've driven my Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus for over 20,000 miles now. It's coming up on two years since I purchased this thing back in the summer of 2019. And man, it has been two fantastic years. And rather than a typical Tesla car review, I just wanted to point out five big observations that I've made throughout those 20,000 miles. And those being how it drives an autopilot, number one. Number two, charging and range, especially being a standard range plus. Number three, software update, something I've talked about many times before. And I'll link a couple videos so you can watch those regarding software updates. Number four, has it been reliable? And the few times I've had service, how has that been? And then the fifth observation is uh, how the range is affected in cold weather. So just cold weather observation. And let's start things off with driving an autopilot and I gotta tell you guys this car is so much fun to drive not because of the acceleration and the acceleration even in the standard range plus is fantastic I've got about a six month old baby boy my first child and even when he's taking a nap if I if I punch the acceleration boom that wakes him up and so it's very good even though it's probably the worst acceleration of any Tesla it's fantastic as far as I'm concerned you can't really put your finger on how nice it is to drive with a car that has linear acceleration. It's just so smooth. It feels effortless. It's got a tight handle. It's just, it's exceptional to drive. It, it, you know, when I went to buy this car, I didn't think that I would love just how it handles and how it drives as much as it does. And man, autopilot is one of those features that Tesla talks about so much. If you've researched a Tesla at all, I'm sure you've heard about full self-driving and the impact that it's gonna have. Who knows when that's gonna become a thing. I still think there's a long way to go. Uh, there's some roads around my house that have perfectly painted lines and I feel comfortable putting it in autopilot. And there's other places around my house where there's not perfect lines and there's some weird merges into, it goes from two lanes to one lane really fast and it doesn't always pick up on that very well. There's a couple stretches under freeways where there's no lines at all and it struggles with that. And so I still think full self-driving is a, a little bit of ways. However, autopilot that comes free with any Tesla you purchase is really underrated. Uh, using it on the freeway is fantastic. And wherever you drive, you guys know what roads are easy to drive on and which roads are a little weird. Those easier roads, I put it into autopilot all the time. It helps me avoid speeding. It just takes the pressure off driving. It's just, it's it's less stressful in autopilot. Uh, start, stop, even adaptive cruise control, if you don't have it, is just a feature that is phenomenal to have. It just, it just makes driving so much better. So how it drives and autopilot have been pleasant surprises for me. Those weren't main reasons I bought the car. However, now that I've had it for nearly two years, there's certainly things I can't go without in any car going forward. The second thing, second observation I should say, range and charging. Range has been no problem. I know I'm in the mid 200s and I don't even charge it to full. I've been charging it to 70% lately just to make things easier on the battery. You're not recommended to go to 100%. I don't even go to 90 because there's no point. In my day to day activities, I, I, I don't know, I maybe try 50 to 100, 100 being worst case scenario. That, that doesn't mean that having more range wouldn't be nice, it certainly would. But if you're someone who's like, I could make the standard range work, but I don't know if it's enough and I can't afford the long range, I'm telling you guys, the standard range is plenty if you're not someone who commutes all the time to work. It's just around town, it's fantastic for just a little family car even. It's been great. So range has been no problem. I've even taken it on some road trips and I'll link my most recent video prior to this one about my road trip to Palm Springs, California. I'll link that in the video in the description below so you can watch, but that wasn't even that bad. Now I had a really young infant baby. And so we had to stop a lot and it was perfect that we had to stop with all the supercharging stops, but it wasn't that bad. Range has been no problem. And charging has been no problem either. Now, that's very dependent on where you live, and I would really research that and look into that. The first year that I had this car, we didn't have access to high-speed charging at home. 
we just plugged it into the wall and got four to six miles an hour. And guess what? We made it work. Now, in large part because where I work, there are free charge point chargers that give me 20, 20 miles an hour. And so we were able to utilize those. Range and charging have been fantastic. I was a little worried about it when I bought it, knowing I didn't have access to high speed charging. Not a problem. We figured it out. We made it work. I think there's going to be more and more chargers. Now, they won't necessarily be Tesla chargers, but there's plenty of chargers in my area that I can plug into. And luckily for me, most of them are free. Even if they didn't cost much, they're still less than paying gas. So range has been fine on a standard range plus. Do I want more? Of course. But can I get by with this? Better than get by, I should say. It works just fine. The third observation, and I've talked about this many times, if you're a follower of the, of the channel and if you aren't, please subscribe. Uh, I greatly appreciate it as I try to get to a thousand subscribers. And for those of you who have been here all along, I thank you guys, I appreciate it. Software updates have blown me away. That was something, that was probably the number one reason I wanted this car. Because I had this idea that if I got a Tesla, I'd feel like this car is newer longer than it would be with another car. Because other cars, new models come out every year, they get new features, and you blink, it's like two or three years go by and there's all these features you have to have. Well, I'm happy to report that the software updates that come with Tesla have completely confirmed that theory I had before I got the car. This car still feels brand new to me. Now I know there's a few changes that have happened in terms of interior differences and I'll get to those at the very end of the video but my car still feels brand new and the number of software updates and features I've gotten in two years have been unbelievable it's, it's almost like they drive a completely different car from an experience perspective the UI has changed I've been able to get hold mode is something I love 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 I love that driving mold uh, mode hold mode the entertainment center for road trips having YouTube and Netflix just all these features that I you wouldn't believe that I couldn't live without even last winter I decided you know what I'm gonna upgrade my back seats because I didn't I didn't get the full premium package and so I didn't get heated rear seats and we were taking more people around we had family around and I was like hey for a couple hundred bucks I'm gonna do it Boop, one click and now I have completely heated seats so just those are un unbelievable features that you get even autopilot I'm not willing to pay ten thousand dollars especially because it's not fully baked yet but if you wanted to with the click of a button you can have it so the software updates just the 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 technology in this car has far surpassed even my expectations and like I said that was the number one reason I got this was feeling like after four five six years I'd still feel like I had one of the newer versions and after 20,000 miles, I certainly feel that way. My fourth observation, reliability and service. Reliability's been outstanding. I've had no driving issues whatsoever. I haven't spent a dime on this car. My wife scratched it pretty badly after two months. It was a, it was a hard day in the Biamonte house, but insurance covered that. We got it fixed. So it's been great. I've had a few cosmetic things that I've needed to take care of with warranty and having the ability to set an appointment in your phone and then have Tesla service come to you is an unbelievable thing. I can't begin to tell you how great it is to not have to make an appointment, get a ride, go to a service center, drop it off, wait a day or two, get it back. That's not That has not been my Tesla experience. That, that doesn't mean it's that way for everyone, but for me, they come to me. I had another issue where there was some weird discoloration with this piece of the car right here, and Tesla came to me and replaced it. So the service has been A plus, unbelievable. I mean, when you experience that, you'll never want to drop your car off at a service center again. And then reliability through two years has met my expectations. Not an issue whatsoever. I spent a few dollars on new windshield wiper fluid, but that's it. So it's passed those tests with flying colors. The fifth thing I want to talk about is cold weather. And that's this is probably the only negative observation I have in my list. But cold weather totally destroys your range. I mean, cold weather takes a beating. Your car has to work hard 
in cold weather climates to keep the battery warm. It, it's just, it's night and day. In the spring, summer, and fall, range is fantastic. In the winter, it takes a beating. The positive to that is because you can plug in your car every night, it doesn't really matter because you, at the end of the day, you just plug it in. And then if you keep it plugged in, it keeps your battery warm. And then when you go to heat it up, it's still plugged in. And then you don't tap into that range until you drive for the first time that day. So it's not a big deal to me, but it's certainly noticeable that in cold weather, your battery takes a beating. I mean, if I were to not plug in my car in the winter, I'd probably lose 25 miles overnight. I mean, it's that drastic. Just sitting there, not doing anything, lose 25 miles of range overnight in the garage. Even heating up the car, if your battery's not warm, your car does not heat up fast. And the heater, I don't have a heat pump. Model Ys do, I think new Model 3s do. I think a heat pump would make a big difference. I don't have one, so the heater doesn't work great. The heated seats work fantastic, but the heater doesn't work great. The air conditioning works outstanding. Not so much the heater, but it's fine. It, it's, it's not a deal breaker for me, but it is something that I look back on and I'm like, you know, I wish I was a little better at keeping the range in the winter and I wish the heater worked a little better, but it's all good. I would still recommend this car. Last thing for me here, there have been some cosmetic changes between my 2019 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus and the current models that are coming off the assembly line in Fremont, California. I think they are kind of hand in hand with what you're seeing with the Model S and Model X refreshes. The middle console is different. There's no longer this piano black finish that just gets fingerprints like you wouldn't believe. And I wrapped mine almost immediately, so it's not an issue. However, one thing I don't like, is you no longer have this compartment that conceals your phone. Do I use it that much? No, but I like having it. I should use it more. So that's, that's one of those things that I wish that they had. Another thing, they come with wireless charging mats. Mine did not. I had to pay for one. Not a big deal. The USB slot is now in the glove compartment. Mine is not in there. So that's another one of those cosmetic differences. If you're on the fence, get a Tesla, guys. I, I think they're worth it. It brings so much enjoyment. I'm such a big fan of this car. And my wife is such a big fan of this car. She was so timid at first, and now she loves it. She even wants a Model Y, which, hey, maybe we'll upgrade this down the road. I don't know. I need to do a thorough review of the Model Y and get my hands on one. But if you're thinking about getting one, if you're on the fence and you can make it work, highly recommend it. Make sure to use a referral code. It does not have to be mine, but get the 1,000 free supercharger miles. There's no reason not to. So I, I hope you get one because every time I see them on the road, I just know the people behind the wheel of a Tesla, they love their car. It's, it's fantastic. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time.